that's supposed to be a street here. Those supposed to be streets. That's supposed to be homes. Many people, when they're organizing people, many organizers, especially if you're organizing in a place where people know you and you know people, organizers generally say, well, where am I going to start? That's the first question you ask yourselves. And that's obviously, in people's minds, the most important thing, and it's the least important. So people say, well, uh, that, that, that uh, family there in the corner, they're, they're not, they're, they're, uh, not interested in, in these problems, so we're not going to see them. Okay. Uh, the second house there, well, they're antisocial. I remember we went to, to a uh, party here about three years ago, and they wouldn't talk to anyone. And you go down the line, and before you know it, you've got everybody eliminated, so you can't organize. <laughs> but finally, you find a, uh, a nice soul. You find a family who's very nice to you, and you begin to organize, and, you, and this family's here, and you spend all your time organizing that family. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, not very comfortable to be there. And one wonders at that stage who's organizing who. I think this are the two conflicts. Now, I don't want to offend you or discourage you, but my experience has been that the best organizers we've had in the movement are people who don't have college degrees. Also, we've had experiences with people who are, and you may not believe this, people who are, and there are some still, who are illiterate and who are some of the most tremendous organizers. Then the next problem that one is confronted with is, what are you going to go organize around? And that's a great... Uh, Many people wind up organizing things that they want to organize, not what the people want. One of the greatest traps is to organize around education. Because no one has been able to define what education is, so how are you going to organize people? <coughs> now, my only experience in organizing has been with poor people, so I can tell you a little bit about poor people. I can't tell you about affluent people, but people who are poor and who are discriminated and who have problems, I can tell you about that. And so, finding out what it is that the people want is the most important thing. And you don't find out by a cert, but you find out by keeping your mouth shut and keeping your eyes and your ears open. And so, I went once into a community in Southern California to organize, uh, there's a community mostly Mexican-American people, where, where Spanish was, the, was the, the main language. They were all poor. When I was a kid, I lived in that community, and one of my friends was killed by a train. There was a, there was a train right to the middle of the city, and he was killed there. And when I came to Oxnard, California to organize, I wanted to organize, get into a big fight with the city to build a bridge or a tunnel under that, because I thought that was the biggest problem there. And so I organized for about two or three months, and I, this project wouldn't go. People said, oh, yes, it's important, but they didn't get... You, you could sense that they weren't really enthused about it. But they were telling me, and I was too busy with my own project, to understand was that they wanted jobs, not, not a bridge over here. Now let me, from my experience, let me tell you what's crucial. Although I made a mistake trying to get the, the bridge built, in, in retrospect it wasn't a mistake, because you see, when you go organize people, you've got to have a program, even though it's something they don't want. As long as you know that you're willing to abandon that for what they want after we find out. But to go and tell people, well, we're going to organize, well, and they, people say, well, for what? Well, to help you. Yeah, but, but like, like, how help me? Well, after we get together, we'll find out. Ah, uh, you can't do it that way. So if you go into organize, you've got to tell, you've got to have some clearly defined goals, provided, as I said, you, you know very well that you're going to change once the people tell you because, see, people have a habit of not telling you what they, what they want directly. You've got to be able to read in between the lines. And it's very obvious how they talk to you. See, they talk to you... If five people bring up the same problem, and five people bring up the same problem in the most subtle way, and it seems like it's not even that important, and you've got to be re able to... First of all, make your notes. When you go back after a house meeting, you've got to go home and, and really 
play the tape back, find out exactly what people were talking about. Because, see, it's key. If you don't know what they want, you can't organize them. And, it's, and the, some of the biggest failures and the most persistent failures in community organizing is that the organizer <coughs> fails to understand what the people want. Concretely. <coughs> this generalization of community organization, uh-uh. You got to give people some very concrete goals. Otherwise, how can you expect them uh, to follow you and how can you... Well, you wouldn't do it either. It's, ex it's very confusing to people to have a very confused organizer trying to organize them. You can expect that people are going to talk to you in subtleties about their problems. But see, they haven't had a chance also to really understand what's affecting them. They sense it, they feel it, but they can't sometimes express it. Now, as an organizer, you gotta be exactly the opposite. Once you get a hold of, of a project or a program or even directions, whatever you're gonna do with them, you've got to be totally and you've got to be explicit about what you're gonna do. And you can't leave anything to chance. You can say, well, I just gave them a general picture of what to do and they're gonna do it. Uh-uh. You've got to paint a little picture and color it inside and put a little frame around it. If you don't do that, you'll never get people to, to begin to, to participate. Because you have to understand that they don't know as much as you do. And they're not you. They're not inside of you. They don't know what you're thinking. Well, let me talk a little bit about meetings. It seems to me that many, some, it must have happened many, many thousands of years ago. Someone, some wise soul invented the meeting to control people. Meetings are the greatest <coughs> poison to community organization. Keep that in mind. You see, because people think, if you go to a meeting to plan, you're dead. I've seen organizers work their heads off to have a meeting, and then when they get to a meeting, it's the most boring thing you've ever been to. How can you expect to have people come back to that meeting? So, we have to understand what the purpose of a meeting. We have to really understand there's several types of meetings, and, and you have to be able to understand what the purposes are, you have to decide in advance, and also when and how you're going to have meetings. The more radical the organizer, the more liberal the organizer, the, more the, the bigger the mistake in terms of people come up with the idea, and I went through that myself, that the people have to decide everything. And let's really examine if the people have to decide everything when you're organizing. You see, you have to understand that if you let people make decisions without responsibility, you're going to get in trouble. And that's not democracy, that's nonsense. In order to be safe, let the people make the decision, but stick them with the results. Let him pay for his, for his decisions. Otherwise, you have nothing. The more responsibility they feel for the decision they make, the better decisions they're going to make. But if they insist to make the decision, let them make it. That decision makes they're going to break the un the organization. Let them break the organization. Maybe that's the best way out too. So sure. I, that's what I the way I work. When I get a group of workers or people, they insist on doing something I think it's wrong. After I try to counsel, and I say I bring my my opinion comes from a lot of experience. But if you really feel strongly, do it. You'll be surprised how wise people are and how much you learn from letting them do those things. The more, you, the more, the, the more uh, convinced you are that what that decision is going to break the group you have, the more convinced you are that, the more surprised you're going to be. On continuing on the meetings, the, the, I've been to some very horrible meetings in my day, and I learned some years back that I was not going to be part of any, of any wakes. What's a wake? Wake. Velorio. An Irish wake, yeah. No, Irish wakes are uh, happy. <laughs> Mexican wakes are a lot of uh, tequila. <laughs> unknowingly, unknowingly, you're having a wake because someone died, your organization died. <laughs> so it's very important about meetings. And you can learn from society. You see, Bankers and, and, and uh, 
rich capitalists don't have to have, they can have a meeting, and it can be a very somber affair. They sit there and they talk about finances. They don't need anything to entertain them because money's entertaining them. What have we got if we're poor? <laughs>